they open up the last one. So they say, um, as soon as they get the day, it's the last one. So it's just like all the players, like, the two players that weren't here, the last one. Now, where's the bridge? Where do you go back? So, excuse me for pointing, but if you go yeah. down this hallway, you're going to keep going, um, and you'll see it'll be a pipe and drape area. There'll be escorts that'll be able to get you there, and they are, it's like pipe and drape areas where the breakout rooms are. They're before the lock so you have to get there before you can get to there. Thank you. Again, welcome back to the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Press Conference. I do have a correction, or I was corrected, for today, the open locker room will actually not begin until the student-athletes are dismissed. So once the student-athletes are leave the dais, then the full open locker room will happen both in the mix zone area as well as in the locker room. Hi, how y'all doing? Caitlin Middle, coach, you are right next to me. Good morning. And Kate, you're on the far left. Oh, and they 
I gotta warn yes. everybody outside. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Press Conference featuring the Iowa Hawkeyes, winners from the Albany II Regional. We'll start with an opening, opening statement from coach and follow with questions from our student athletes. As a reminder, the student athletes will then be dismissed and we'll head to the mix zone for additional interview opportunities and we'll open up the floor for questions for coach. Um, at that time, again, when the student athletes um, are dismissed, the locker room will be available for media availability at that time. And coach, if we can open it up for a brief opening statement, and then we'll go to questions for the student athletes. We are obviously extremely excited to be here. Um, this is everybody's goal, right, at the beginning of the year, to, uh, to be in the final four and have the opportunity to play for a national championship. Uh, when we were here last year, nobody thought we'd be here again this year. And we didn't listen to anybody. We just listened to the people in our locker room and our family and our circle and here we are again. So I'm proud of the women and how they kept believing no matter what. Um, obviously, we have one of the best players in the, in the country uh, on our team, and we're thrilled to have that. But I do not want this to be a game that's promoted as Caitlin versus Paige. And I know it already has been, but I don't want that. I want it to be Iowa versus UConn and let these two women do what they do best. All right. At this time, we'll open up for questions. I'm gonna start with Doug, then we'll go to Nancy. Second row. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the Associated Press. Caitlin, what did you learn last year when you were in this Final Four that you can apply to this year on and off the court? Yeah, I think being here last year, you don't, you're not really prepared for everything that goes on outside of the game. There's so many distractions. There's so many events you have to attend. There's so many obligations that you have to do. and you know, your main focus is to come here and you're playing in the biggest basketball games of your career. So um, I think being able to block all that out and um, really lock in and focus on what your job is and what you're here for and, you know, knowing we're not satisfied. So I think that's the biggest thing is soak all that in and enjoy it. But at the same time, you know, this is business. You know, we're here to win a basketball game and hopefully win too. We're going to go to our right, Nancy. Kayla. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports, kind of piggybacking off what Lisa said, so much of the attention has been on you specifically this year. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned this over the weekend. When you're gone, what do you want to see and what do you think needs to happen to continue the momentum that women's basketball has seen over the last couple of years? Yeah, well, I think the parity in our game has certainly helped over the course of the last, you know, whatever, five years. I think there's, you know, there's always been the blue buds that have been really good, but I think you know, over the past few Final Fours, you've seen teams that maybe haven't been there in 25, 30 years. And I think that's really good for our game. It attracts new fans. Um, it showcases new players. It showcases new coaches. Um, and I think also the amount of stars we have in our game, especially the young stars we have in our game. I think the this freshman class really put on a show this year. You know, they had me watching. They had everybody around the country watching. Um, and I think the beauty is most of them are going to have to stay and play for four years. Um, and they're just going to get better and better. Their teams are going to get better and better. And um, that will also additionally help the parity in our game and attract more people to want to watch. So I think those two things are, you know, the most exciting part about the future of women's college basketball. We're going to stay to our right with Lindsay. We will come back over to our left after that with James and then Jonathan. Hi, Caitlin. We're here. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, to your point about there's all this other stuff going on here, there's a USA basketball mini camp that you were invited to, but you're busy, so you can't go. Um, have you talked with anyone from USA basketball about how you might navigate that going forward? Have you seen? I mean, all the players are just walking around here. Has anyone come up and talked to you? Hey, we're ready for you to join whenever you're ready. Honestly, like, First of all, I've been lucky enough to play for USA Basketball three times on their junior national team. So I know how the system kind of works. And Coach Bluter has coached for them a few times. And um, anytime you're invited to do anything with USA Basketball, it's a tremendous honor. But, you know, obviously for me, it was like a win-win, like either doing that or doing this. And obviously this is where my focus was. And I wanted to get back to the Final Four with this group. And, um, I mean, honestly, I haven't talked to anybody. You know, I have people that do that for me. And, um, I think growing up, like your dream is always to be on the national team and play for the national team. And a lot of those players that are, you know, in that pool or selection of who's going to be on the Olympic team are my idols. Those are people I grew up watching and wanting to be like. So, um, yeah, I think it's more than anything. It's just a tremendous honor to be invited um, and be on the same list as a lot of those great players. 
We're going to go to our left. Go ahead, James. Uh, for for Caitlin and Kate, I'm I'm Jamie Watkins for for Cleveland.com. Um, you guys, Caitlin, you just talked about the how to continue the momentum that that women's basketball has right now. You guys are in it, so it's probably hard to recognize. But how would you guys describe the moment that the sport is having right now? If we could start with Kate, and then we'll go to Caitlin. I mean, it's just super cool to be a part of. Um, we're not taking anything for granted when it comes to that. I think it's hard when you're in the moment, like you said, to really recognize and realize what is happening. But I mean, it shows with our viewership versus LSU, 12.3 million, you know, viewers that that's something super cool. And, um, you know, that just attracts more fans. And uh, that's a good brand of basketball. LSU is a great team. So are we. So um, you know, it's fun whenever we can be a part of this and obviously having stars like Caitlin and other stars across the country, you know, that that attracts more and more people. And it, it's fun to be in the position that we are and be role models and people that, you know, others can look up to. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is like there's been so many amazing players that have come before us and later really saw the foundation of what our game has become over maybe the viewership numbers over the course of the last two years. But I think as a competitor and being involved in this moment, like it's hard for you to wrap your head around. Like when you step on the court and you're playing for 40 minutes, you're not thinking like, oh my gosh, there's 10 million plus people watching this game at home. Like that's just not going through your mind. And obviously once you see those numbers and you see those numbers up against like, you know, it was only beat out by one regular season college football game. You know, we beat out every NBA game other than the game five of the finals. I think that really puts into perspective, uh, what exactly where women's basketball is going and the type of, you know, excitement around our game. But I think as a competitor and somebody that's so focused on, you know, what this team needs to do and, you know, playing two games a weekend, it's, it's hard for you to wrap your head around. We're going to go to our right. We'll come back to our left. And then um, Jonathan, I'll get you next since you grabbed that mic from her. Go ahead. Christy Winter Scott, Big Ten Network. And this question is for all three, if we have time for all three, but tactically speaking, Coach Bluter, you were, discussing how it's Iowa against UConn and if it were a chess match what would be the chess I mean the checkmate x factor for success for your team actually can we hold on those because we'll open up for questions for okay. coach after we dismiss the student athletes so could I could, go with Caitlin and, and Kate on that yeah I mean we obviously know that they're a very good um, team they're very disciplined in all aspects and they're obviously very well coached and so um we know they have Paige on their team and we're not, you know, we're not going to score, you know, keep her to zero points. Um, but I think we're going to change up, you know, different defenses, throw some different things at them, keep them on their toes. But really at this point in the season, it's more about us than who we're going against. And we're just going to continue to focus on things that we focused, we've focused on all year and uh, yeah, play Iowa basketball. I think that's the main thing is executing what we need to do. I would say the same. I think I don't I don't think there's just like one thing that's like you do this, you win the game. I think it's you have to play a complete basketball game. And I think that's what we've been able to do over the course of the last two games, whether it was Colorado or whether it was LSU. We were really good on on defense. We started off a little slow in our zone versus LSU when we played man to man the rest of the game and really, you know, battled. I think, um, you know, going to have to play great half court defense, going to need to run in transition, going to need to execute our offense in the half court. So I think it's all those things. And like Kate said, like, you know, at this point, like you scout, you watch film, but at the same time, like you got to have a lot of focus on yourself too and executing what you do. And um, I think that's where a lot of our, our focus um, lies. We're going to go to our left ladies, um, gentlemen with the plaid shirt. All right, Trey Modlin, WOVU 95.9 FM. This is for Caitlin and Kate. Mm -hmm. Talk about the impact that, that Coach Bluter has had on your careers, both on and off the court. If we could start with Caitlin, then we'll move to Kate. Yeah, I think, I mean, I could sit up here and talk all day about Coach Bluter. I think the biggest thing is like for myself is like she believed we would be here and be in this moment. And that was the greatest thing for me, you know, going throughout the recruiting process is like I wanted to play for a coach that had the same vision that I did. And, you know, we were probably about the only two people that believed we would be at a Final Four. And now we're at back to back Final Fours. And um, additionally, I think like she's one of the best leaders I've been around. She values every single person in her program from top to bottom, whether you're you know, a student trainer or whether you're the associate head coach, you're going to get her same attention and she's going to value you just the same because everybody's role is important. And that goes for every single player on our team too. Like we all have an equal voice. We all are valued the same inside our locker room. And um, I think that speaks for our culture, but also like people can tell when we're watching how excited our bench is, how excited the players are on our court. Um, and, you know, that starts with your head coach. And um, I'm just lucky to be coached by her. 
Yeah, I want to echo everything Caitlin said, but also something that's super special about Coach Bluter is, you know, she cares about us as people first over basketball players. And, um, you know, she'd be one of the first people I would go to her office and, you know, go with a problem or, you know, if I needed advice for anything, um, she'll be the first person to give me great advice and be a shoulder to lean on. And so I appreciate that about her. But I, I mean, I've always wanted to play for Coach Bluter ever since I was really young. And it's been a dream come true because, uh, you know, she's just she's the best. And um, I'm very grateful that I've had the opportunity to play for her for six years. We're going to say to our left, Jonathan. Jonathan Tannenwald of the Philadelphia Inquirer. This is a question for Caitlin. You played against Paige and UConn, if my memory is right, in 2021 in the tournament. It was very different circumstances in a whole lot of ways, obviously, off the court with the pandemic and everything. But what are your memories of playing against her? And how different do you think this moment's going to be? I know your coach doesn't want it to be about Paige, <laughs> Paige against Caitlin, but this moment is so big. What do you think it's going to be like? Thanks. Yeah, honestly, that game is super blurry. It feels like forever ago. Um, and I was looking back and I saw like just some old footage of that game and we both look really, really young. So it's cool to see kind of how our careers have evolved um, and a lot of different players on both teams. But I don't know. I mean, like Coach said, like it's not Paige versus Caitlin. And, um, you know, it takes the entire team to win a basketball game. And, you know, both of us are going to do everything we can. But I think the coolest thing about Paige is how resilient she is. Obviously, she's kind of been dealt a tough hand. And, um, you know, that girl only has positive things to say about her teammates and the way she carries herself on and off the court, the way she works hard. And none of that has changed, you know, since I've known her since she was in middle school. She's always worked that same way. She's always had that fire. She's always been a great leader. And, um, you know, I really honestly couldn't be happier for her in the year that she's had. And, you know, the way she's led this team back to the final four when they've kind of been dealt a, a tough hand as a program and they never made excuses. And to me, I think that's something, you know, you just really admire as a competitor um, more than anything. So I think it's really cool. We're going to move up to our front, the young lady with the hat on and on my on our right. Hi, I'm Lex with ESPN. Uh, Caitlin, why do you wear the number 22 and is there an inspiration behind it? Yeah, honestly, I'm not a very creative person. I was born on January 22nd, so that's what I went with when I was about five years old, so. <laughs> All right. We're going to get to you. Go ahead. Do you have the mic yet? We'll get to him. Sorry. Caitlin, uh, Tom Withers, AP. Since we're in Cleveland, and this is where your college career will end, it's also where LeBron's NBA career began. Mm -hmm. um, have you had any interactions with him over the years, and do you plan to play to your 40 and score 40,000 points? <laughs> I mean, that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, I wouldn't say no to that. And um, honestly, I've never talked to LeBron like directly, but obviously I've seen he's commented about myself. And I just saw this morning, he talked about women's basketball in general and how good the game is and the stars in our game. And he knows what he's talking about. He pays attention. Um, you know, he supports the game. He doesn't just talk about it. Like he really shows up and supports. And I think that's the coolest case coolest thing one of the greatest players of all time um really helping support and grow women's basketball like that's exactly what we need so um he's somebody I've always idolized so it's cool to be in Cleveland and and play here a place where his career started and he was able to do so many amazing things we're going to take our final two questions we'll do the gentleman in the second row and then we'll get to you Nate Anthony Lima 92.3 the fan here in Cleveland obviously you don't need anybody's validation outside of your locker room for what you ladies have been able to accomplish, but piggybacking off what Tom said about LeBron, you had Luca, you've had celebrities coming out of the woodwork, kind of parachuting in and watching your game. Does it feel differently when you have so many people talking about your sport that you live every single day and now everybody, including our talk shows and around the country, uh, physically and verbally talking about your sport on a daily basis over the last month? Is this a question for both student athletes? Sure. We'll start with Kate. Um, my bad. Yeah, you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll move to Caitlin and I then think, go to Kate. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really special. I think it's, I think it's cool. Like, you know, this is exactly what we wanted for women's basketball, but also I feel like, you know, it could have been a thing a long time ago. There's been so many amazing stars in our game and there's been so many amazing people to support our game. Like, um, it's not surprising that everybody's wanting to talk about it right now, but the product has always been there. Maybe it's, you know, on an increased level. And I think that goes back to my first point is, you know, the parody in our game, the stars in our game, the young talent in our game. Um, you know, people are just attracted to that. They love watching. They love watching the competitive fire. They love, 
you know, seeing more upsets in the women's tournament, like all of that is just attracting more and more people. So absolutely. Like it's, it doesn't get old seeing so many people talk about women's basketball. Like for me, I think that's the greatest thing. And I know it'll only continue to and grow more. Any additional Kate? No, I don't have Sounds good. We'll move over to Nate. Thanks. Nate, Nate Larisha, Westwood one, uh, Caitlin, congratulations on all the success. I know the job's not finished, but you've done some amazing things, obviously on and off the court. What are you what are you proud of most? Oh gosh, that's a loaded question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I'm most proud of just the way my career has evolved over the course of the last four years, I think. Um, you know, coming in here and, you know, I don't know, there wasn't like people didn't really ever think we would get to the final four. And now to be here back to back times is amazing. But, you know, at the end of the day, like People aren't going to remember how many points I scored. People aren't going to remember, you know, people may remember that we were in the final four twice, but people aren't going to remember like my buzzer beating shots versus whoever, like that's not going to matter to people in the end. I hope they remember, you know, how we made them feel, how we brought joy to their lives, how we gave their families something to scream about on the TV on the weekends. You know, I think, I hope those are the biggest things that people remember. I hope, you know, all the young boys and girls remember the joy that we played with and how we took 10 seconds of our time to sign their autograph and, that inspired them to, you know, be whatever they want to be. I think that goes for like, I think I'm speaking for our entire team and, you know, that's what we're kind of the most proud of the way we've carried ourselves through this entire process. And I think that's additionally allowed us to have so much success on the court is just the team and the family that we've built over the past four years. And that speaks to the way coach Bluter has built this program like this. There's been a lot of really good Iowa women's basketball players to come before us and give us a foundation to, you know, maybe take another step forward and, you know, take this program to a place it hadn't been to. And, you know, since, the nineties. And, um, for me, like, that's the coolest thing is I've had so many amazing life opportunities and created so many memories with some of my best friends. And, you know, those are the things that'll last for, for, for ever, excuse me. Sorry. Thank you very much, ladies. Best of luck on Friday. As a reminder to those in the, in the group, uh, Kate and Caitlin will now move to the mix zone for additional media availability. And our locker room is now open. I'll let everyone give everyone a moment and then we will open up questions for coach. Nancy, we'll start with you. 